think outside the box, if you will. I mean, go there, go off campus. Let's think this through. And sure enough, that's where the Mustang was born. When it finally hit, it took the country by storm. Everybody, welcome to another edition of Cars in Context. I'm your host, John Kaur. You know, this is the Motor City, and this is the show where we put cars into the context of your everyday life. We love to celebrate the automotive heritage here in Gross Point, but we will make no apologies for our decidedly Detroit perspective. And today we do have a very good Detroit perspective because we're in the midst of a revolution of sorts when it comes to powering our cars and trucks. And the whole question of fuel cells, we promised you on a previous show we would come back and talk about fuel cells. Are they the future or are they just folly? And to do that, we brought in none other than Chris Sawyer of the <laughs> virtualdriver.com, the best blog on all the internet. I certainly think so. Well, and <laughs> it's good. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. That's right. No, it does. It does. <laughs> because, Chris, the difference is, uh, it used to be back in the day when we went through automotive journalism, you had to be a pro, you had to be paid for it, you, you went to school for it, you, you researched it, you did your homework. Nowadays, you got a laptop and a, an opinion and a computer and you're off and running. But that's Works why, for me. No, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't. But so we're going to talk with Chris about fuel cells and see if they really are folly or if they're the future. But first we have to find out something. What's in the news? Yes, Chris, that's absolutely right. But I'm going to start off by talking about another one of our favorite topics, electric vehicles. Oh, yeah, God help yeah. us. So apparently, <clears throat> folks, I know you know this. If you've been watching our show, and if you haven't, you've got problems that I can't solve for you. <laughs> you should watch our show. There's trouble out there in EV land. Really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we've been pointing this out in previous shows all along. We were right? Yes. Why don't my stock picks work this way? Uh, that's you know that's a great question. That's a different show, I think. Oh darn. Uh, sales of electric cars are nowhere near where the government wanted them to be. Kel Supreze. <laughs> I love it when you talk dirty. Um, <laughs> so now French the Obama is not dirty. <laughs> Ooh la la. The Obama administration has now begun to shift its support because of the sales debacle uh, away from EVs, and now what they're doing is pushing them toward fuel cell cars. Did they know we were going to have a show today? Who they called Washington, D.C.? Well, the NSA is probably listening to us anyway, so that doesn't really matter. Well, no, this actually happened a long time ago because former mm -hmm. Secretary of Energy Stephen Chu was admitting as early as last year that the feds need to put less emphasis on the EVs anymore and now put more emphasis on fuel cells. And hmm. funny, they haven't offered any new credits, any electric car credits, since the time he mentioned that. Hmm. Oh, that's going to screw the market. Yeah, it sure will. Well, now, now think about that, because now uh, Tesla, uh, because of the California Air Resources uh, Board's uh, consideration of slashing EV credits, let's just dump it, they said. We can't, we can't sustain it. We're not going to sell that many cars. Mm -hmm. And if they dump those credits, Chris, what's now, Tesla could see credits drop 40%. That, that really subsidizes their sales. Yes, they do. And I make a prediction, California will mandate electric vehicles once again, and then after that, unmandate them, just like they did last time. Wow, because you know that uh, we already had uh, a show about how you just can't make money on things that the people aren't buying. And well, uh, Tesla itself doesn't make money, but despite what he says, he doesn't make enough money to continue it. Why don't you talk a little bit about Mr. Elon Musk's Tesla company? Well, sure. Uh, well, let's do it in, in this next news item. Okay. Toyota and Tesla's Elon Musk have been trading barbs of late. Wow, they don't Toyota's, get along? Yeah. Toyota says it doesn't see much of a future for battery electric cars, <laughs> while Musk calls the fuel cells fool cells. Oh, how cute. He called them fool cells. And says they're a load of rubbish, mostly because of the cost of producing them. That's oh, like <laughs> batteries aren't expensive. <laughs> <coughs> As a rebuttal, Toyota announced the price of its fuel cell car coming in next year in Japan. It's 7 million yen, or Se about $68,000 at today's no, exchange wait a minute, that's rate. a good deal. 7 million yen, Cheaper I thought it would be Tesla. 10 million yen. Toyota's fuel cell is said to have a range of about 430 miles, more than a Tesla. And most importantly, the car can be completely refueled in three minutes. Try to recharge that battery. Who's the fool? 
Because of the California Zero Emission Vehicle Program, automakers must sell EVs and fuel cell cars, even though there's no way to make money on them. We've been down this road before, haven't we? Well, wait a minute. That's the, <laughs> I don't understand. how We thought that would cost, unless you have a real yen for these things, we thought there okay. would be... <laughs> They were going to be $100,000. Yes, because about, uh, so the, about the time GM was going into bankruptcy, the cost of a fuel cell stack was $150,000. So it has come down. It's come down. It will come so, down So more. Tesla's saying, you guys are a bunch of idiots, Toyota, we're putting your money there. And he's going to put up this giga factory for these batteries, batteries. of his. And let me, let me make a prediction for you. We will have electric cars. We will have fuel cell cars. We will have hybrid cars. And, t and Tesla will be selling his batteries. And <laughs> they're, they're the one, they're, we will still are going to have mostly cars with internal combustion engines. That makes you, doesn't it, that's just wrong. What about the fuel cells? That's what today's show is about. In fact, I got a news item here that says people are cashing in on them right now. Honda. Good luck with that. Yeah, well, Honda is joining Toyota to introduce their fuel cell vehicles in Japan next year. They have to. <laughs> See? And according to Japan's Nikkei newspaper, yep. which is my Bible, yeah. Okay. Uh, initial prices for the Honda fuel cell car would be almost one hundred thousand dollars. Must Thank have more you. stuff on it than the oh, Toyota one. I don't know. But by next decade, Japanese automakers hope that prices will drop to about fifty thousand dollars. The report said that the two companies plan to build about a thousand fuel cell cars and sell them in U.S., Europe, and of course Japan later in twenty fifteen. So that's only like next the end of next year. Mm -hmm. Hyundai incidentally, has already sold its first hydrogen-powered Tucson crossover in the United States. It was out in California. Uh, they offer this. Check out this deal on the Hyundai uh, <laughs> the Tucson crossover fuel cell car. $499 a month lease, only in California, which includes unlimited hydrogen refueling for three years. Well, they have to because there's like, what, 12 hydrogen stations? Well. And they're all within a, a small corridor in California? Well, you got to know where to go, Chris. Oh, yeah, I, I tell you, they're telling you where to go. Okay. <laughs> Come on, tell me something about some other fuel I can't okay. take anymore. Propane. Oh, propane. We used it all summer. That's something Don't wrong you hate with when that the neighbor, Hill. <laughs> when the neighbors are over for the 4th of July and you fire up the propane grill, then it goes, I'm out. What? And then you got to go to Lowe's. I mean, just. I've done that many hey, times. Where are the hot dogs? It sells in bulk, bulk for about $1.50 a gallon. Well, that's and that's why it's being used. Uh, is, its use is expanded in commercial vehicle truck market. Yeah, a lot of During trucks. During a are recent National Truck Equipment Association conference, or as we like to call it, NT, people think we're smart when we use acronyms like I that. Yeah. UPS, another acronym, look how intelligent I am, <laughs> announced <laughs> that it will buy 1,000 Freightliner trucks powered by a 6 liter GM V8 that runs on propane. 1,000 of them? 1,000 of them. Hey, that's as many as they're selling of these fuel cells. Vehicles, <laughs> but a big expansion of propane use to commercial trucking could cause cause supply issues in the home heating industry, <laughs> which has suffered shortages funny, and price spikes last winter. Yeah, out remember east. last winter out east? <laughs> yeah, it's out east. Propane. They couldn't get propane last year because the price went up and there was a shortage or something, and people were saying, "Hey, it's cold." Logistic more than anything else. Perhaps CNG may be a better way to go. Our supply of natural gas seems to be more sta stable than that of propane, uh, especially since we have 533 years of natural gas, and that's a conservative so estimate. So, Chris, why doesn't somebody just pick the playing field and let's do it? Because the government's involved. They don't let the market no. dictate. No. Shame on you. Anyway, I've got something. Here's some really big news. Yeah? Toyota? Yeah? They've got gas. Really? Must they have nachos for dinner? No. They didn't go to Taco Bell. Uh, as you know, automakers are working on, I mean, they're working on a billion ways okay. to reduce vehicle emissions, but that's not the only area where the industry is trying to become greener. So th 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 I'm not making this up. This is all 100% true. You can, you can check it if you don't believe me. Toyota has just teamed up with a local landfill next to their plant in Georgetown, Kentucky. They yeah, this is okay. pretty common in the right, auto so, industry. So they're going to use gas collected from the landfill, which is usually what? Methane. Methane, right? yeah. Which usually is. And they're going off. to, they're going to, yeah, they, that's right. They yeah. have, but now this time they're going to capture the gas and then collect it and store it and then use it, uh, ship it over to the plant, use it in fuel generators to provide electricity, which will later run the plant. That's a great idea. Yeah, and they said uh, Toyota estimates that the landfill gas will pro provide enough power to build 10,000 of the 550,000 vehicles the plant can build, uh, and it should begin sometime early next year. So they're going to take the gas out of the landfill, capture it, and then run they use it to run electricity. They should use the same system in the commissary over there, too. <laughs> Don't try the meatloaf. But anyway, <laughs> so I'm just telling you, folks, this is the kind of great stuff you can only get on Cars in Context, but we have even more fun stuff.
NASCAR trivia. Yeah, we have a, part of our, our weekly trivia contest is to give someone out there an opportunity to prove how smart you are when it comes to cars. So we have our weekly trivia contest. And this week, we got a tough one. Okay. okay. All right, so we're going to ask you this question, and we want you to put your thinking caps on, try to figure out the answer. When we come back, we'll give you the answer. All right, so here we go. Ready? My cap's on. All right, here we go. What was the first car fitted with an alternator rather than a direct current dynamo or a generator? What, what came out with an alternator first? The dynamos were really big. That's how they created electricity. It was direct I know current. the answer. See, and I hate when he says he knows the answer. You know what, folks? This is why you want to stay tuned after the break, because when we come back, we're going to put Chris in the driver's seat about, yeah, yeah, it's true, about fuel cells. But we're going to ask him, we'll see if he knows the answer to this question right after this. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Cars in Context. I'm your host, John Clore. Today we're going to discuss fuel cells. Are they the future or are they just folly? But before we do, we'd like to give you the answer to this week's trivia question. And uh, Chris Sawyer here of the virtualdriver.com says that he knows the answer. And, you know, Chris, I'm going to give the answer out. I hope you're right. Because when you say to everyone that you know it and then you're wrong, how embarrassing is that? I already know it. Uh, well, <laughs> so I already know let it. Let me repeat the question. Yeah. What, what was the first car fitted with an alternator? Yep rather than a direct current dynamo and the answer is let's see if he's right 1960 Plymouth Valiant oh, that's right that was the answer mm -hmm. now this is the only picture I could come up with one was it was really a beater <laughs> this, was, this was really look now whoever has the hubcap to this Valiant please bring it back oh, this, or the rear tire for oh, that matter oh, wait a minute. Okay, it could be in a junkyard the window uh, it's hard to find a picture of a 60 Plymouth Valiant you know you know what I I really want to get my hands on one of those why? Because I can make money off my brother Ron and or Jim, for that matter, the two big U of M fans. Yeah. I'm going to get one of those. Can I completely restore it? I'm going to paint it Michigan blue with yellow pinstriping, and right over the name Valiant, I'm going to put the words "Hail to the Victors." So and it so will the be the Hail to the Victors Valiant. Oh my Lord! So there, you, that's why we have these trivia. I mean, this that was really great. And congratulations for getting the answer right. That's, I have to get something right sometime. <laughs> but though. We are hoping you're going to be right about today's show topic. It's time to put you in the driver's seat and let you, I mean, let's... I want that steering wheel. A little girl has that. All right, I'll tell commercial. you what. I, I, I'll tell you what. If you keep appearing on, on Cars and Context, I will give you the steering wheel. I have a steering wheel. Okay. I'll bring it in, folks. And all I can say is, who the hell else would show up on the show? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> holding, holding a steering wheel. That's true. All right. So the question here is, that we've been talking about this for, for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. Technology is improving. Yep. Prices are going down. We just heard yep. in our news items what's happening. Yep. There are people are going to go forward with this, uh, if we like it or not, Chris. The well, question is, fuel cells, it's a technology like electric cars, like all fuels. Is this the future like everyone says it is, or is it just folly? It's part of the future, and I, I think it's more of a, it, it has more legs to it than than a true electric, you know, battery-powered vehicle. Because really? the battery is just a storage medium for the electricity, okay. and it takes a long time to put that energy back in. Mm -hmm. A fuel cell vehicle, sort of, it, it, it's much the same thing. It's, it's if you take the Volt, for example, which is a, a fuel cell vehicle with an internal combustion engine in place of the fuel cell. <laughs> you take that, that internal combustion engine out, you put the fuel cell in, there's your drivetrain for a fuel cell vehicle. And what it's doing is it's got the batteries as a storage medium, but it's, and it's using the fuel cell to continue to charge them. Okay. And you have continuously charging while it's going through until it runs out. The, the, the energy that's already in the batteries, plus right. it's in the fuel cell uh, uh, and coming through its, its hydrogen uh, development. Then, the nice thing about a fuel cell is it's just like a gasoline-powered vehicle. You take it to a, to a station, you open the cap, you put in the, the, yeah. the hydrogen line, you mm -hmm. fill it up, about three minutes later, you're out the door and you're going all, uh, along the road until it, instead of 26 minutes for a really fast charge for a battery or overnight. Right. You don't want to fast charge your battery anyway, you'll, you'll ruin it over time. Yeah. So, it does make a lot of sense. You know, but... Chris, yeah, that, let's get to that part. Let's get to the but because but, and that, we had one. a picture on our in on the news section of how these work. Mm -hmm. uh, so I I understand that that's straightforward. But there's always a catch. There are a number of catches okay. right now, and okay. and one of them is is the we use protein ex, ex, uh, electron uh, exchange, exchange membrane, mm -hmm. a PEM, <clears throat> and that PEM is actually thinner than Saran wrap. Uh, so it it. You have to be really careful on how you use it. 
And they, it, it's been only until recently, and I think it was Honda that finally was able to crack it. They didn't work in cold weather. They yeah. didn't work at all. Yep. Um, so you had to have a heater on board. Well, Honda, I think, has found a way around that. And um, then there's the problem of where do you find the hydrogen to fill it up with? Yeah, that's a real stickler. And I think a lot of people are worried about these cars. We have, what, 10,000 well, gasoline stations or something I'll, like that in the United States? I don't know. If you gave me a hydrogen car right now, where would I go? I'm in Gross Point. I don't you would have go nowhere because the only place you can, you can, you can refill it right now is, where? is at, at one of the uh, test tracks for the big three or at uh, uh, Consumers or DTE. They well, have a place downtown. It's totally crazy, Chris. And uh, in California, there's yeah. I think 12 stations. And <sighs> so there, what really needs to be done? Well, the, the only place I agree with Elon Musk is Elon Musk is putting up his supercharger stations all over the country. Right. That's a good. And idea. he's paying for that. Right. Uh, for a lot of it. Which is least. what it should be. It Which should is, be the government it, doing it. It should not be the government doing it. What we need to do now, if we're going to make this work, is we need to find a way to to create hydrogen in a way that makes sense. And oddly enough, coal is a great way to do it. I hate to burst the president's bubble. Um, and right. it would be a very cheap way to do it. That's and right. you would also be creating the CO2 that we could recapture and turn into gasoline so that the rest of us would be, have another line of gasoline that we could use. Um, but the, uh, the, thing of the, the, the fact of the matter is that if I was Elon Musk, I'd also be making sure that my supercharger stations had the capacity to take hydrogen because Ooh. pure electric is never and you can oh, are we these words making a prediction not, of these Chris? words will not hound me when I'm dead or even when <laughs> okay. I'm alive pure right. electric vehicles will never take the place of internal combustion or fuel cells or whatever because they are just a storage medium no matter how good they get the theoretical wow. is not what you will see in terms of practical. You're only going to get this on cars in context when we bring in Chris Sawyer and the virtualdriver.com. I mean, Chris, this I like fuel cells. I've driven the fuel cell vehicles. I hate the fact that they're only automatics. I'm sorry. I like manual transmissions, but that's me. Um, <laughs> but the you. fact of the matter is uh, they're coming along. They're coming along quickly. They're going to just get better. But we're still looking. While, while we're seeing these cars now, the, the Hyundais, the Toyotas, the Hondas, mm -hmm. we'll see some from Ford and Chrysler and GM. Wow. We are not going to see these things in volume production. And for me, volume production is when you get above 20,000 units yeah, a you year every year. Yeah, thousand of them. That's just ridiculous. Um, we're not going to see that for another 20 years. Whoa, whoa. Well, I was just recently at uh, an automotive symposium where uh, they were asking people on the street about. And, uh, Are these the same people they asked who won the Civil War and some of the people said the East? It, it, Chris, this is what I'm trying to tell you. It was those same people. Because this, uh, this young lady was very uh, adamant that she wants to buy an uh, alt-fueled car and she hates oil. And she said, no we've never gone to oil. war over solar. And I said, okay. And then We don't need to go to war over oil. That's we right. have all the oil we need here oh, right now. I fear I've wakened the sleeping giant. 1.4 trillion gallons I, we I, know about, or barrels the, we know about. What all they said to her was, would you consider uh, hydrogen-powered fuel cells? She goes, hydrogen? Isn't that what blew up the blimp? And so, folks, no, that was helium. <laughs> So cool. No, helium didn't blow up. No, it didn't blow up. It was a spark. It was, it was hydrogen in that one. It was one. hydrogen in that one. So but but let, let's not talk about the fact that what they covered it in was, is, is, is something. Static we, electricity? No, it, no, no. What they covered it in, the silver on, 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 the, on the Zeppelin, oh. that it, in, in the concentrations they used was, was less, but we call it thermite. It's an explosive. Oh, my goodness. So when the, when, when the static charge took off on it, mm -hmm. that's what went up first. Don't you just love Google? Oh. So I would uh, remind her to just... You know, let's let's quit indoctrinating look, people. Let's, look, let's put the yeah, truth actually, out there. Actually, study it up and read about it and make your own decision and don't make the let the government or yes, yeah. don't let the market. You, you're responsible for your own life. You're responsible for for the lives of those around you. Stop this. Make garbage. an intelligent choice. So fuel cells. You heard it right here, folks. Fuel cells are probably a better part of our future mix than just pure EVs and some of the other stuff. And there will be a way to do it, and we will do it. But trust me, for the amount of energy within it, the price it takes to, to, to do it, and I'm including all of the costs, including the pollution, nothing beats what comes out of the ground in terms of oil. And oil is not dead dinosaurs. They're now beginning to believe that it is being produced in the center of the earth and shoved up 
There you the go. Surface. We'll frack that. So let's, uh, <laughs> it's a great topic. Thanks, uh, you guys, for asking us to do this show on it. And we, we do want to uh, do shows on topics that you really are concerned about. Yeah. But you know what? It, now it's time to shift gears. Oh, I love shifting gears. <laughs> okay. So well, well, this time is where we. Uh, I'm reading it. It says pick of the week. Yes, that's right. It's, it's, it's on the monitor over oh, there. Oh, yes. Okay. It's, I hate when he looks ahead. You know those guys always look ahead. You ever do the PowerPoints and then you give the deck out and the guy's like on the last page and you're first on the first slide. And he sits there and he goes, <laughs> on page 34. <laughs> then yeah. he walks out halfway through. Yes, it's time for pick of the week. This is the time when you send me a picture uh, where you find wherever and if it looks really kind of cool or interesting and we have something to say about it, we'll put it on the air and we'll share it with our entire WMTV audience. So this week's pick of the week, Chris, check this out. I know the rest of the world thinks that global warming has caused thunderstorms now, and our weather is so severe that we've never had thunderstorms before. Yeah, but guess right. what? <laughs> but guess what, Chris? This Pull is a picture out. from a Chicago neighborhood in 1963 where a thunderstorm came through oh, and wreaked havoc. Falcon. That little poor Ford Falcon was in the wrong place at the wrong time, and that absolutely lost a tree. And the guy now. I don't recommend if you're cutting a tree, this could have been, if they had YouTube back in 63, the guy walking up there trying to cut that tree off at the top of the branch. That, that. That's sort of like that guy in that insurance commercial who drops it on the Camry <laughs> next door. <laughs> yes, I always love that because that, that thing comes down absolutely straight. Yeah, I don't know if I would cut the tree that way. I would just call like Bob Schomer's tree service or something. Yeah, exactly. Come on, fix it. But thanks for sending in that photo. It was kind of cool. And there was a note to it saying, you know, proof that global warming didn't cause thunderstorms. This year we don't have worse weather. We had bad weather back then. Yeah, absolutely. And it was only 63 for crying out loud. Where were you in 63? I was five years old. Okay, well, don't brag. <coughs> okay, so um, now... I won't ask how old you were. <laughs> yeah, I was 10. Yeah, okay. okay. So, uh, this is another... This is really? You're five years older than me? You don't act it. <laughs> <laughs> My wife says I act 19. <laughs> Uh, but that's a whole other show. Come on, Pride in the no. Ride. So, yes, it's time, now it's time for Pride in the Ride. This is your chance to shine on Cars Don't you hate when I'm on this show? No, I love it. You can now send in a picture, because you always were able to do that, no matter you know, when. We started this yep. a long time ago, where you have a photo of a car that you have pride in. You send it to us, and we'll put it on the air, and we'll tell you the whole story. So this week, Pride in My Ride is sent to us by a guy named Gary Kimmel. Gary has this 2002. You ready for this? He calls it the <laughs> Stop. Really? Stop. Stop chuckling. He calls it the Bat Bird. He took a 2002 Thunderbird. Now Holy Bat something else. He, he went to the mall, and he, he, I guess he turned left during the door. No, it was actually during a car show on display at the mall. But he turned his 2002 Ford Thunderbird, and he parked it next to the real Batmobile at a which car show. Which used to be a Lincoln Futura. You're right, which we had on a show recently. Yeah. So he wanted to make his little T-Bird, it's Bat 1, in Gotham City. See his license plate? Gary lives in Cumberland, Maryland. And we met him uh, at uh, the Eyes on Design show in Gross Point, and he wanted to show us his picture of his 2002 Batbird that he has very much pride in. Can you believe that car? Now, here's credit. what I hear about it. Those pieces on the, the, the rocket launchers, on, they all come off where you can drive his car normally. So he'll be able to sell it when he comes forward, because sometimes <laughs> that's a little hard to do with him. Most popular guy in the neighborhood with his kids when he goes oh, to the street. Oh, I bet. Yeah, really cool. I bet. You know, I wouldn't mind turning my one of my used beaters into the Batmobile if I could, but, you know, I'm not very good at that. So paper mache doesn't last on Jefferson Avenue doing. I don't know if Mustang too <laughs> bad for <laughs> no. Mm. No. So, wait, there's even a better part of the show. Oh, yes. It's yeah. time for Lauren to come up and Yeah, read Lauren her Parrott, mail. who has her own show on WMTV called What to Do with the Warm Mail. Lauren, is it true we have viewer mail this week? I look so good. You know, I should talk to you to find out what to do with the Warm Memorial because when I show up here early and John's always late, <laughs> I'm just sitting here not knowing what to do with myself. What to do? Lauren finds out what to do is find us viewer mail. Thank you, Lauren. You're welcome. Good job. Okay, now listen, I want you to know that I was busy. <laughs> but no, we're here. Uh, we're here yes, to, you had to get. <laughs> yeah, we had to make sure things work on the show. That's but Chris, true. why don't you take this very first piece of your mind, and I'll take one. Okay, this one comes to us from Susan R. of Gross Point Woods. Watches us on Comcast Big Cable 915. Ooh, you know what that means? HD. Yeah, we're in HD. <sighs> oh, gosh. Mm. Sorry, Did Susan. Did my hair look good? Sorry, anyway, Susan. Anyway, dear Cars in Context, I love your shows that talk about the future of cars. A couple of years ago, I saw a news report about a car that ran on water. How did that work? Do you guys recall such a story? And if so, what happened to that idea? I think, yeah, I have it. I brought was a picture. That the one, was, was that the one about turning That's it into hydrogen? H2O? Guess what? <laughs> Here's the thing about it. I see There's Chris is going to tell you about this H2O car. It ran on water, Chris. We have water. You need more energy to what? turn it into hydrogen than you would be getting out to run the car. 
That's well, why it didn't turn into anything. It sounded like a great idea. It runs it goes on through water. Ele electrolysis. Oh, so it, it takes Susan. a lot of energy to do it, and you would have to, to then compress it and do all this other stuff. So, yeah, it's a great idea, but it, it doesn't work that way. Well, here's the other in, thing. in the future, we'll talk about air hybrids, which actually are a real thing. Now he's scaring me. But here is something you should consider. Water is really one of our greatest natural resources. And mm -hmm. so when people said, oh, we're going to get it to run on water, unless it runs on seawater. Yes. You know. Then, or but not fresh water. drinking no, water, God which please. we are here blessed with around the we've, we've already done it with, we, you know, we, we, we caused the, the trouble in, in the Middle East when we, when we put all this ethanol in our cars that came from corn. Yeah. People don't talk about that. Yeah, we don't want to use up but, our drinking water, uh, that's for sure. That caused a lot of trouble. But Susan, a great, yeah. um, thank you for the question. I think it's a great question, and it just sounds cool. My car runs on water. Yeah, and well, then one that runs on vodka. Yeah, well, ooh, that would be expensive. We've done the Look, there's a gray goose. <laughs> no, uh... God. I've got one. I've got okay. one. This one comes to us from Andy R., and he lives in Harper Woods, who watches Cars in Context on AT&T Uverse. So do I. Oh, well, there you go. Channel, Channel 99. 99. Yeah. yeah, okay, great. Well, this one says, uh, Dear John, I've been watching your shows for some time now. Well, we got a long-time viewer. Lauren, thank you for finding that one. Is that he in great. prison? No, he's not <laughs> in prison. And it seems to me that you guys are just contrarians. <laughs> Always taking the opposite side of the more popular points of view on various topics. Do you guys really believe what you say? Or are you just trying to boost your ratings by making people upset? Did we make you upset, Andy? I'm guessing we did. What did we do? No, we're not contrarians. No, no. Um, uh, I, I go back. I go back to uh, to, to something that's going to sound a little funny, but but Saint Alphonsus Liguori was asked once about uh, the the fact that he was asked to give advice to this woman about her life and. He gave her some very blunt advice, <laughs> and when she left, someone said to him, "Wow, you know, you were really blunt with that woman. Shouldn't you, you know, have, have sort of like sugarcoated it or told her what she wanted to hear?" And he goes, "I'm not doing her any favors by not telling her the truth. Yeah, I'm trying to help her. Yeah, and that's... we're here trying to tell you the truth. Yeah, we're not. And yeah. so the fact that you don't get it elsewhere means that." You should start asking about the agenda of the people who you're Yeah, listen, no, we, we're not doing that to boost ratings, although Lauren, uh, we, we do bring Lauren on to boost our ratings. We, uh, but we do. We <laughs> but do, it's we're not, not because they're not watching no, us. We're, no, we're not interested. I mean, we're, we're just interested in telling you the truth, and that's why, you know, the whole idea of the show, we're putting cars into the context of our lives. And, we, yeah. and what's happening, folks, is you're getting fed a lot of stuff by the lamestream media, and everybody's a bobblehead. Nobody asks the right questions. So we're bringing on people that have been in the industry all their lives. We're, we're, we're into the car industry. We know this stuff, and that's all. And, but, but thanks, Andy, and thanks to you too, Lauren, for bringing us that question. Because and Andy, that's if you don't believe me. us, look it up. Andy, yeah. Well, yeah, we, yeah, and, or we'll we'll stand on the record of the show. I mean, absolutely, what we're saying here uh, will ultimately be proven out. I think mm -hmm. this will be our has been a lot of times so far. Uh, so far, so but thanks for that anyway. For the and if you have a question you'd like read on the air, send it to me, jclor at carsincontext.com. Even if you don't agree with us, and we'll put it on the air because Lauren's going to bring it up here, and especially if you don't agree with us. That's right. But you know what? We're out of time. <sighs> I know. I know. We just got started. Just but listen, got rolling. Chris, Thank you very much for coming along. I know we're going to be reading you on the virtualdriver.com. Thank you again. And folks, thank you for watching. And until the next time you tune in, remember that knowledge is power. I'm your host, John Clore. Thanks for watching.